Hi, this is Lloyd Robertson. You're listening to CKHA 100.9 Canoe FM, community radio for the Halliburton Highlands. Time is now one minute past uh, 10 o'clock here at uh, Canoe FM, and we're uh, delighted to uh, welcome Sabrina Falla uh, from Ottawa. And Sabrina, how are you this morning? Um, very well, thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you with us here at Canoe FM. Yeah. And uh, th- things are good in the big city of Ottawa? Yeah, things are great. I just hope the the heat stays. <laughs> <laughs> well, it looks like we've certainly got uh, this week uh, with lots yeah. of great weather, huh? Yes, yes. Now, and uh, I guess for performers such as yourself, because you do have done over uh, your career a fair bit of entertaining in the out of doors at various events, right? Yeah. So this yes. is this and, is uh, like a bonus. This is the weather I like to perform in, definitely. <laughs> if if it's raining, it's like oh no, great. And then if it's thundering, then I can't perform outside. That's right. Of the that- equipment. So this is a safe weather. <laughs> well, Sabrina, it is it is nice to have you on the program and I wanted to start by uh, just talking about uh, the early days, and I wanted to ask you, mm-hmm. when when did you first know that you were going to be a singer and a musician? Um, I think that would have been when I was 14 and I won my first singing competition. Oh, wow. I, I love being on the stage. Actually, I cried two hours before I went on the stage because I was terrified. <laughs> I was young. I was terrified. And my parents and my friends are like, if you don't do it, you'll never get back on that stage yeah. again. So, so I did it. And I didn't expect to win first prize. But then I liked being on stage. Mm. So that, that was when... I said to myself, "You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna try this and see where it takes me." And I'm still doing it now, so yeah, it's great. You know, when you uh, uh, see the reaction of the audience and see that mm-hmm. connection, and then the applause, that, that's pretty euphoric, isn't it? Yes, it actually motivates me to continue. Yeah. Now, does uh, music run in your family? Well. Sort of. My dad, when he was younger, used to be in a band in Iran, and my and my cousin in the states, he has a studio. So it it is in the family, but I'm the one that's taking it further. I'm trying to go further with my career. Well, so, good for you. Good for you. Yeah, I'm 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 really per- pursuing it. So, well, I, I've it's like lo- this is not a hobby. This <laughs> this is actually something I I want to live. I, I was looking at your website, and and uh, I was looking at all the things you've done. You have been a busy, busy person. I actually like being busy because if I'm not busy, I go crazy. <laughs> I just ha- I, I'm a type of person that has to have something to do, or else I'm just going to go crazy. Like I have to do something. Yeah, so I just love music and you know if i go for a walk i'll listen to music i carry mm-hmm. it everywhere with me in my life so so i so i understand that you love the reaction of the audience and and all that mm-hmm. like being on mm-hmm. stage but but what is it about performing music that that drives you at a, a deeper place um because you write a lot to say yeah go yeah ahead. The, uh, a uh, crowd reaction, but also being on that stage and singing for people is what I love to do. And also I'm doing it for myself too. I, I think music can be kind of a healing, like, like a therapy for you too, because if you're having a bad day, singing for people, entertaining people makes you happy. Absolutely. So I, just, I, just, I just love taking my guitar, playing, and just singing. Right. It's just... I, I go to another place, basically. It's like I'm a different person on stage, pretty much. So. You are you are great on the guitar as well. I must <laughs> Thank say. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, your your uh, expertise is comes through Thank on you. all your music. A lot, a lot, a lot of practicing. <laughs> <laughs> years and years of practice. Yeah. Well, in this day and age, how hard is it to uh, drive a career in music? Oh. It, it, I always tell people, you have to want it, you have to love it to do it. it. 
if it's a hobby, enjoy it. But if it's something you really want to do in your life, you have to break through the walls of failing, of falling, of not doing things right, because this business is tough. Mm-hmm. If you want, but if you want your songs heard, you, you got to work for it. Mm-hmm. You have to push it. You have to go out and perform. You have to have social media. You have to connect with people. Just do it. You're going to feel happy in the end now, that you did it. Along with that, and doing your career, and of course you earn money from that, uh, do you think that performers get paid fairly for what they do? Like, are, are you happy with the kind of income that you're able to generate from this career? You're talking as an independent artist, yeah, right? Yeah, as an yeah. independent yeah. artist, um, yeah. I've had a lot of problems making money being an independent artist, but uh, as you know, I'm, I'm kind of halfway independent right now because I am in talks with a label, so I'm just <laughs> <laughs> talking as when I was a bit independent. Um, actually, venues can, can rip you off, too. Mm-hmm. So they can say, we're going to pay you this much, or they don't pay you, or they, or they lie to you that they were never going to pay you, or they give you a drink instead of that. And so, but from, from, from my good experiences, I would say I've, I've, made, uh, I've made some good amount of money, but I wouldn't say it will. It, I, I made back my, my expenses that I spent, mm-hmm. but... But I made some pocket money for gas and for some food, but I didn't make everything back that I spent on my record, definitely. Yeah, uh, it was interesting. Robin Banks, who is a great Canadian blues singer, uh, she said uh, about a week ago, she said she had an offer of a gig for 100 bucks, and she turned it down. She says, I'm not doing a show for $100 wearing a $1,000 dress. <laughs> Uh, I it guess depends, it depends where you add in your career. I I was getting a hundred bucks and I didn't care, <laughs> but uh, but I'm not wearing a thousand dollar outfit, so <laughs> that's definitely. I'm that's just right. wearing my my skinny jeans and my plaid shirts, and I'm off. But no, I I I didn't really uh, mind how much money I was getting as long as they gave me the money when they told me they were going to pay me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If they say 20 bucks, give me my 20 bucks. <laughs> don't say I don't have money. Here's five bucks. Now, you, that, it, 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 it's crazy, but there, there are some bad people out there to just make sure everything is written down on paper. You have to go into it with your eyes wide open, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about your, um, your, uh, recordings that you've yes. produced um your, yes. f- your first ep was produced in england uh, yes. tell us a little bit about that experience so i i produced it with Stuart epps and how that came about i was in college at that time so like a long time ago so i really can't i think that was 2009 or 10 and um I was in my producer's class because I, I took the music business in college. Mm-hmm. So every week a, pro, a producer would e- either call or come in to talk about the industry. But that day, Stuart was on Skype calling in on video. But I didn't know he could see me on the, on the, on the laptop because I didn't know the camera was faced my way. <laughs> so... And I was back then the shy girl wearing the hood, covering her stuff. I was very shy back then. Like, I was, like, going to a stage. A- anyway. Um, um, oh, yeah. So what, what happened was he asked the class a couple questions, like, who writes songs, who plays an instrument, who sings. So I kept raising my hand. And at some random point, he asked my, my teacher, who is that girl in the front? I'm like, wait a second, is that me? <laughs> so he, he picked me out on the spot, asked me questions, and then at the, at the end, he wanted my information to talk. So And then a year or so later, uh, we, we reconnected because I, I had to get stuff, and then 
we we recorded. Isn't that and great? I I really enjoyed it because he wanted to do what I wanted to put in the song. So he would ask me like, "How do you want to sound like?" I said, "You know, like old rock and roll, like Green Day and stuff." So he really brought out the sound I was looking for. And every producer I have worked with have really understood what I wanted to hear in my music. So it's it's really good when you have people who who want to listen to you, not the ones who say, do it this way, yeah. do it that way. Yeah, that's Which, pretty key. There are people out there like that, and I have dealt with them. And I ended not, and I ended up not releasing the song because they didn't come out the way I wanted. Right, good for so you. It can happen. It can happen. Sometimes you just have to stand up for yourself. And it doesn't matter how much money you, you spend. If you don't like your product, don't put it out. Mm-hmm. Don't. That can do you there's, a lot of damage. There's a reason for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, last year you went to Nashville. Uh, yes, was I did. Was that everything you hoped it would be? I actually was shocked because I didn't know Nashville accepted rock artists <laughs> at that time. So when I got the opportunity to go there, I couldn't believe how much support they have for every genre of music. And I, I recorded in a country studio because all these big country bands were there. And I was like the only unsigned rocker. And it's so cool. But, um, yeah, it's, it was a great experience. And I would love to go back. There. It was beautiful. We're talking with Sabrina Falla from Ottawa, a fine Canadian singer and musician and songwriter. And I want to talk for a moment, Sabrina, about songwriting. Uh, mm-hmm. wh- what got you writing songs? When did you start that? I think I was in grade four when I started to write poetry and short stories for school and for myself. Because at, at that age, at that time, I wanted to write a book, little short stories for mm-hmm. myself at home. I was always into writing. And then a few years later, something came to mind. If I can write poetry and, sh- and short stories, I definitely then they can write songs because it's just a summarization of it, right? So, and then I learned the piano and then the guitar. So I've been writing since I was very young, and that led me to wanting to write music. Mm. So... So, I've always wanted to put the ideas that I had in my mind on a piece of paper. So, so <laughs> yeah. When I listen to your music, there's yeah. there are some very very uh, strong stories in behind the yeah. songs. Where do you get your inspirations for the songs that you write? Personal experience. Mm-hmm. Uh, seeing somebody who has gone through it yeah. to help that person to help others. I like to write songs that have messages to help people if they're, if they're struggling. I like to write helpful messages through my music. And also, I hope it, it helps me as well by letting it out. Sure. And it helps others if they're going through it or, or if they know somebody else going through it. But I just write things about life in general. What do we all go through in life? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When, when you're not performing... Do you, right. ha- do you have time for other things in your life? Like, what do you enjoy outside of performing your music? Actually, just recently, I've been feeding the squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> so that's kind of a random thing. I also, actually, there is a gray squirrel, and he he's so used to me. He comes right up to me. I just put the peanut down. He takes it and goes. Like, he's not scared of me. And that's the only squirrel. And there's a black squirrel. I don't know where he is right now. I hope that nothing has happened to him, but <laughs> yeah. he's somewhere cruising. <laughs> but um, but other than that, I love to bake. I love to uh, bake cookies and cakes and cupcakes. So I just enjoy driving, going out, seeing my friends. I have very supportive friends and family and, of course, supporters online. So I feel I'm, I'm okay. I, I, I do make time for everybody. I try to make time for everyone because you do have to see your friends and family at the end of the day. You do. You still you have do. to live life because keeping your yourself in a box doing one thing is going to drive you crazy. Now, when you, you have to live life, yeah, you do have to live life, and and you live life today, but you also live life for tomorrow. 
When, when you look yeah. at your future, how far do you look a, ahead? Are you looking three months ahead, a year ahead? Oh. What, what, what do you see? Where is Sabrina Fala going to be six months, a year from now? Signed to a label. Signed to a label. Because I am in talks with a label right now, and, and we are negotiating. So I do see that happening. And hopefully a nice tour. Ah, Finally a go. big tour with a band, and yeah. So, so that is an important uh, objective for, I've always for seen myself with the label, if I ever got to one, which I'm really happy that I am in talks because it took a long time, <laughs> a lot of work. Well we'll, well, we'll keep our hopes up for you. Thank you. Thank you. That is a big opportunity for sure. Now, for young people who are passionate about music, what would you tell them about a career in music? What would you tell young people thinking about this? If they want to take it as far as I am going. Mm -hmm. to yeah, sure. Um, always believe in yourself. Don't let other people bring you down because there will be jealous people out there who will try to make your life miserable. And, and have faith and go for it and don't give up. Do what you love. Enjoy it. And you're going to fall, but you've got to get back up mm -hmm. because that's the only way you can move forward. Sound Trust advice. Me, I've been through it all. <laughs> and I'm glad I had supportive friends and family and supporters online that were always there sending me, telling me beautiful messages and my friends and my family telling me not to give up, to push and push. Just do it because you want to do it also. You, you have to have that strength in you, too, to get back up. So. Very sound advice. Now, if people want to learn more about you and your music, how would they do that? Yeah. They can go to my website, sabrinafala.com, and on the top, I have all my social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and my iTunes link is there also. And I do have a Snapchat. It's Sabrina underscore Fala, if you want to follow me there, too. I'm very random on Snapchat, because I, I love it. So I do some crazy stuff there. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you're it's certainly just the fun of it. You're, you're really it. well connected. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> and and you obviously enjoy that interaction with people who are following oh, yeah. you. Yeah, it's, it's I I meet a lot of people on different social media. It's amazing. It's fun. I just love connecting with people. Sabrina, it's a nice happy family. <laughs> Sabrina, we're going to play a, a, your song. Paradise comes at a price. And I want you to tell us a, a little bit about this song. This song is about depression. And I wrote this song for people to have hope and not to give up and not to let themselves go. Mm. Stay strong. I know it's a tough world out there, but stay strong. All right. We've been talking with Sabrina Falla from Ottawa and Sabrina... I want to thank you for joining us this morning on Canoe FM. Uh, it's been a, a, a joyful conversation. Uh, thank and you so much. Enjoyed knowing more about you. And, and, yes. and, and I'll be watching to see if that label deal comes through. Oh, I'm sure it will. Good stuff. Good stuff. Thank you. Thanks for joining us this morning, Sabrina. Thank you so much for having me today. Have a good day. Thank you. Sabrina Falla, and here she is with Paradise Comes at a Price. All alone in your hotel room Bloodshot eyes looking to leave the gloom Climbing up that stairway where you can almost taste the sky Dropping through the atmosphere Asking yourself why through tears That needle in your vein feels like ice On a night like this you don't think twice
come crashing down You can't let go and touch the ground Is that what you really want to leave this world right now? So stuck in hopelessness Deep in your own darknesses You push yourself to the end Leave the note behind on a ledge Paradise comes with a price Too hard to listen to advice Your heart and mind stuck in a vice Paradise comes with a price piece of stuff. That's uh, Sabrina Fall of Paradise Comes with a Price. Uh, interesting gal and uh, a hard-working Canadian performer. Looks like uh, her career's about to turn, which we're glad to hear. Hi, I'm Colonel Chris Hadfield, Commander of the International Space Station, and you are listening to 100.9 CKHA Canoe FM, the voice of the Halliburton Highlands. <laughs> 